A human design talk at a wonderful festival. With a ball, excellent. Um, it's an honor to be here. It's an honor to be with such good people. People who have gone inside, people who know there's more to the world than we're being told. And I want to try and give you in an hour some tools that you can use in your life that's going to help. I call it human design, a way to be free. So it seems a bit strange that we have a system. So <laughs> you find yourself in the system and I'm saying, well, you can get free. You've got to understand that we are in the Maya, we are in the illusion, and there is a way to know who you are in the illusion that is verifiable, that is experiential, that you can uh, know to be true. You know it's true because when you hear the truth, there is a recognition, there is a ring to truth, and I hope to be able to light this up for you. Can you just give me a show of hands? How many of you got your chart? Good, okay, okay, good. So the um, people often wonder who they are and they try to find out. People tell them who they are. They find out through their experience, but they don't really know. And this question stays with us till the day we die and we do our best. But you've got to understand what the mechanics are. This is a mechanical truth. It's not something you have to believe in. It's not something that uh, it's not something that is handed down, it's something that's in you, it's something that's biological, mechanical, in your life. We are told that the world is uh, homogenized, that we're all the same, and we're not, but we're all individual. And yet we're connected to one another, and we're connected to one another through the aura. Is that a question you have there? Okay, I love that. Okay, so this is, a, this is an example of two, two individual auras. So the auras is about seven and a half feet to, to either side, there is your electromagnetic aura. And you are going to be affected by those people that come in to your aura. So if they've got seven and a half feet and you've got seven and a half feet, that's within 15 feet, your auras are merging. And what your design is, and what their design is, is going to merge. A little like this. So we're unaware of it. We're generally unaware of it. And I want you to make, I want to make you more aware of it with a few experiments later on. There is a code that differentiates us from everyone else. We are unique. We are absolutely unique. I am a twin myself. I have a twin sister. Our charts are different. I've looked at the charts of, anyone know what a reflector is? Yeah. Okay, good. So a, a design of someone who has no particular life force that's fixed. I was given two twins. The father came to me, he said, tell me the difference. Exactly the same on the surface. Underneath, almost the same. They're born between, within three minutes of each other. But deep down at the base, there was a difference. And that's what set it up for the their different lives. Twins love to live in polarity. If you've got twins or you know people that have twins, you know what I mean. You will find if you go down uh, the rabbit hole of human design that things do get quite spooky. Um, you will see that. You will see that synchronicities happen in ways that you can't imagine. So for each individual person, there is an individual design and hopefully a lot of you are looking at your design now or know your design. I'm going to be referring to it at certain times and we're going to try and experiment to see if you can feel it too. And that will be my proof. Here's an example of someone you may have heard of, Eckhart Tolle. So, you know, he's, uh, when he speaks, he's kind of, you know, he's a very freaky kind of character. And if you look at the, if you look at the, uh, the channels going right the way through the middle, this is individual channels. You know, he's, he's part tribe, he's part individual. He speaks his own truth and he began with the power of now because it was a direct experience. Everything after that came from the publishers and getting him to do more books, but basically it was a direct experience from his individuality. Here's Donald Trump. Donald Trump is a manifesting generator. He's got... Uh, He's got three of the four motors. 
uh, including the material line. So obviously very much into, into money, but also into experience. And also tribal in the sense that he does have a, a way of opening people up. You know, when if he can have a face-to-face -face with people, he can get through to them usually. It's built into him. But he doesn't know, he doesn't have a fixed identity, so he'll play any role. And he can play it like an actor plays it. Like everybody that has that white diamond in the middle of your chart, you are also an actor or actress. Doesn't matter what role, you can play that role really well. You can make people believe it is you. The truth is it isn't. The truth is you're like a chameleon. This is David Icke. How many of you know David Icke? Hey! <laughs> okay. So the thing about David Icke is if you look at... Okay, well one of the things about David Icke is he has the gate of, the gate of control um, in the open will. So he's really here to find out what the, under, the control mechanisms, mechanisms are underneath everything. Which I think he does a pretty good job at. But okay, so there is a small center there, triangle, it has a 21st gate, which is a gate of control. So he's not here to be willfully in control, but he is here to know what the under control, the, the control mechanisms are. He is, in, he is here to assess what is being said and if it's true or not. He is here to have justice and fairness as one of the main things in his life, if he's operating correctly. Uh, this is Sai. Is Sai here? How many of you know Sai? Yes. So if you know Sai, this is, this is a manifesting generator. If you look at the red square, there's only two gates there. One of, them, <laughs> one of them is a channel of mutation, and the other one is raw power going into survivalist. He's got one of the most chaotic profiles possible, <laughs> as you know. And, you know, he will survive, but sometimes he feels like he won't. It's a kind of, a, it's kind of life and death every day for him, and there's got to be something new, there's got to be something fertile. You know, he's got, to have, he's got to have input where he's putting all his energy into something, otherwise he gets bored and life becomes meaningless. This is why music is so important to him. When you have a lot of individuality in you, you are largely acoustic, and if you don't have music, then you are going to suffer from depression, and you're not going to know what to do. We'll go into the, uh, the circuits later. And he also has, <laughs> he also has a, a very logical mind. So, you know, logic is great as long as the pattern works. But if the pattern breaks, you don't know what the fuck to do. But uh, it can be, it's usually correct because it follows the facts. But you're dealing with a very mutative energy inside. And uh, I like mutative energy. <laughs> So if you look at your chart, you'll see that there are some white areas. There are, there are nine centers. And where you're white, you're not fixed. Where you're white, you're going to be conditioned by other people around you. I want you to think about that. I want you to think about you're moving through life as soon as you get within 15 feet of someone. Whatever they have colored in in their chart and you don't, you're going to be taking it in. And it's going to affect you. And if you're not careful, you're going to make decisions based on it. And this is what happens to most people. Okay, so there are, there are nine centers in the human design body graph. And most people will have something white. And some of you, maybe one or two, will have everything filled in. Doesn't mean it's better, just means it's more consistent. Around 50% of people in the world have emotional chemistry running through them all the time. And 50% don't. Whenever the 50% don't come in touch with those that do, they're going to amplify it. Whatever you have white in the chart, you will amplify whatever someone has fixed in their chart, colored in in their chart, you're going to amplify it. It's not you. If you have an open triangle right at the very top, you're one of 71% of people that haven't got that filled in. It means that the rarest thing in the world is inspiration the rarest thing. That's what we're all looking for. We're looking for mental inspiration. And the problem with people is that they tend to think too much. They tend to stay in their heads because a lot of people have an open mental system. And we miss what's right in front of us, which is our life force. So I'll quickly go through. Nine centers, look at your chart. The one at the top, 
they're trying to find out, they don't know what's, what's really interesting, they pick up what's interesting around them, the triangle underneath it, the ajna, they don't know what to think. They're open to thoughts, but they don't know what to think. If you have that centre green in your chart, you know what to think. You're certain about it. You might be wrong, but you're certain about it. <laughs> if, if, you, if you've got the centre underneath of it open, you don't really know what to say. I mean, it's open. You're great at noticing what people have said. You're great at measuring manifestation. But if you start the conversation, you tend to go, uh, uh, um, uh, where was I? You can get lost in your own conversation. Do you recognize that? Do you hear what I'm saying? It's something that's predictable. It's something that will always happen. So basically, if you have an open throat, wait for someone to start the conversation. Then you can be really brilliant at pointing out what they've missed. You're scanning all manifestation with that. You're going to pick up on things that no one else picks up. You're going to be at some point really very good at being able to describe what is going on because you've got a wisdom there. All the white centers are areas of wisdom or they're areas of getting lost. If you've got the, 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 uh, the next center, the G center underneath, then you've, you're basically, you don't, you don't have a fixed identity. Notice how often you change your, your clothes. Notice how you can play this role and that role. Notice how easy that is for you. You know, you go to Italy and you're, you're flapping your hands around and you, you know, you're becoming like the Italians wherever you go. You will take in the background field if you've got that open. You don't have to be fixed in being anyone in particular as an identity. You're here to pick up other people. What are their characters? What are they all about? If we keep on going down and we get to the sacral center, this is not knowing when enough is enough when it comes to energy. Now, 68% of people are gonna have that red in the chart. 68% of people are generators or manifesting generators. They have a power within them. They have a life force within them consistently. And they need to use that life force, all of it, every day in something that's right for them. And if you don't know what's right for you, instead of being free, you become a slave. You begin to use that energy in an incorrect way and your energy begins to degenerate. If you have the life force within you, you are here to work, but you're here to work at something that really is good for you and you will know it. You'll know it because you'll be making sounds like, ah, mmm, you know, there'll be sounds of enjoyment when you're using your energy right. If you're not using your energy right, for most of you, there's going to be, you know, you're going to be withdrawing from it. So notice what your life force says to you when someone approaches you or when there's an opportunity or when something is going on. Do you respond to going towards it or do you shrink back against it? It doesn't matter what you're thinking. You have to follow the energy. Those three types of others we haven't come to the types yet but there are there are four types of human being the other three do not have that uh, they do not have that fixed so they are here to ride their life force of the 68 percent but they're not here to work consistently if you have that center open white in the chart you know you don't really want to work don't you You're not, you're not here to be consistently working. You're here to do part-time or consultancy work or something like that, but you're certainly not here to work. Not all the time. It's not going to work for you. You get exhausted. You don't have that life force pumping through. You need to enjoy the life, and you're here to go to the generators and show them how they can enjoy their life too. They can be so busy working, they forget about the life. So we need you guys to open up the life for us. If you have the center at the bottom, the root center open, this is a tendency to always be in a hurry, to overschedule, to not give yourself enough time, to rush through life, to feel the adrenal rush, you know? Feeling the adrenal rush gives you a sense of vitality, but it also will exhaust you. It will burn you out, it will burn the adrenals out. Do you recognize that, those of you who have that center open? Okay, good, good. So the main message for those who have it open is slow down, slow down. 
don't put yourself under pressure. You're not designed for pressure. If we go to the one on the left, the spleen, those people that have that fixed have a fixed sense of well-being, largely speaking. Um, they usually have a stronger immune system. Um, if you have it open, there'll be this sense of vulnerability. When you were little, if you had this center open, you'd be clinging to your mother if there's a sound, or you'd be running away or whatever. You know, this is a openness and basically, you know, you need a, you need a nice shawl or something to wrap around you, you know. You need a, you need a, um, a bed canopy above the bed, some material between you and the outside world when you're sleeping. You need to make sure that the food you're eating is clean food because you can't deal with the toxins that those that have that fixed can. So you need to take care of yourself. And in that sense, you could be incredibly wise about how people can take care of themselves from a health point of view. So you have wisdom there. You have wisdom there because you know when you're standing next to someone who's off in their body, you're picking up the toxicity. You know, these are the natural... Um, hmm, natural... I don't want to call them... Can I put it? Natural alternative healthcare people, because they can pick up when something is wrong in someone's body at a physical level. But they've got to take care of themselves. If we go to, if we follow that up to the, oh no, the will we've talked, no, we haven't really talked about the will. Let's go to the will. So that the smallest center is willpower. Now, you know, not, there's only about 35% of people that have that red in the chart. If you've got willpower, wow, I mean, it's really impressive. You can use your will for a certain amount of time and then you don't want to do anything. I mean, it's very good for short term things and it's very impressive and it needs to be respected. Um, but at the same time, you don't really want to work all the time either. You're looking for some kind of passive income. You're looking to use that willpower to get yourself to a situation where you have control of your material world and where other people will do things for you. But you can also be very good at bringing in community. Uh, you can be very good at, um, some of you will be very good at uh, knowing how to handle the material world. Uh, others will want to know that. It's a strong thing. It's, you know, to have a will is, hold your head up higher. You should be proud of yourself carrying that energy. But at the same time, there does come a responsibility because people do need you to help them. Yes, the, it's called the Ego Center, the Heart Center, and the Will Center. So it's got three names. Okay. The final center is on the right-hand side, the Emotional Center, which I've already mentioned, and I hope to do an exercise with that. If you know, can you, let's just do a quick test. I'm not there yet, but I just want to see how many people have this emotional center open, white. Okay, good, good, good. And how many have it filled in? Ooh, okay, so, okay, so you know who you are. We're going to try and experiment uh, using that, it's, and you'll see. Okay. Um, human design, this system is a synthesis of the... I Ching, the ancient I Ching, and the Kabbalah, and astrology, and chemistry, and physics, and genetics. It's uh, both east and, east and West together. This is an example of the I Ching. Well, in fact, it is the I Ching. These are 64 chops. I mean, 64 images that describe all possible human experience. Isn't that amazing? You know, a revelation that came from looking at the back of a tortoise, you know, 5,000 years ago. Turns out, amazingly, that there is a direct correlation between that ancient prophecy and the genetics in modern, in modern science. It's direct. It's perfect. It couldn't be more perfect. When you speak to the Chinese about the I Ching, they're going to take you through a linear path from hexagram one and two and three and four. The beautiful thing with human design is we've, we've got it in a body graph. 
we know who has what and you know who, who if you've got it or not it becomes personal it's taking all possible human experience and showing you that in your pattern and yes you know we are a pattern in a program you, you're not available for everything you can't be anything you want you want to be who you are that's the whole point of this and because this 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 matrix can be read you can find out if uh, not many people have seen this chart and if you can see it this is this is the chemical uniqueness we can break everything down to the amino acids because of the correlation between the I Ching and the genetics This is uh, the founder of this knowledge, Ra'uruhu. He described the wheel as the most beautiful thing he'd ever seen. And why? Because it's absolutely perfect. It's absolutely perfect. We have the I Ching around the side, on the outside. We have the gates, we call them gates in the body graph, around the inside. We have the astrological um, planets on the inside of that. In the middle of it all, we have the body graph. And it's exact. If you know how to turn the wheel, you can go forward or back in time. So we can go back into history and see what was going on. We can go forward into the future and see what is going to happen. And we have. Ra doesn't talk in terms of uh, good and bad. He talks in terms of correctness. Are you being correct for yourself? Are you making a decision according to what your authority is or not? That's the only question that's worth asking. Are you being correct you? or not? And uh, consciousness is incarnated in, in a body. Uh, for some more than others. Um, but basically there are two components in human design. There's the personality crystal, the awareness that you, of, of who you are, who you identify with. And then there's the body uh, crystal, you know, the body. You've incarnated into a body. In fact, you're hovering slightly above it. In a small little material piece of something that is about five neutrinos wide, very, very tiny. And yet it's attached to the body for the length of the life, depending on the serotonin levels. That doesn't mean you take extra serotonin, that can be very dangerous. But we have a certain lifetime, and it's really to to live according to who we are, that's the whole point. To live our unique life, because no one else is going to live it. There is not going to be another one of you. There isn't, you're not going to come back exactly in this form again. This is the only time, and at this point, this may even be your last human life, because there's other things going on as well. So it's really about making it count. The human design system gives you a point of reference between yourself and everyone else. You've got to understand you are different. And the more you understand that difference, the more you appreciate who you are, the more you can laugh at who you are, the more you can just be it. I mean, yeah. As an example, Gloria over here is a, there are, there are 12 profiles, like the 12 sun signs. And she's a 1-3, the same as me. So when, you know, when things go wrong, she's perfectly capable of fixing them or finding a way one way or another. Like I've cobbled together this this stand for my computer. We learn by trial and error. So it's just interesting to see who you know who has different profiles. You'll get to see what I mean. It leads to some really good conversations. So the reference point to one's open centers and how they become conditioned by others. Remember the openness can get conditioned by others. You can watch it. We're going to see it in a minute. You're not designed to push your way through life. You're not designed to push against resistance. You're not. You're not. These people that say never give up. Well, never give up if you've responded to something that's correct for you. But if you haven't, definitely give it up. Because it's not taking you anywhere. It's just giving you a shit life. <laughs> and it's not about other people telling us who we are or what we should do either. If you know who, if you're correct to you with what's happening, you will know. You will know, there's a, way to f there's a way of knowing. Hmm. The truth is simple, but the living of it can be a bit tricky. You've got to self-observe to some degree, you will. For example, if you've got an open throat and you find yourself speaking too much, shut the fuck up. 
you know, begin to be aware of that can be a tendency. And when you do, when you're quiet, when you have your ability to measure manifestation, and I say, then you see the wisdom, and other people see it too. You don't have to attract attention. You can see that you become more effective when you don't start the conversation. As an example. And uh, <laughs> if it wasn't enough that we get conditioned by other people, we're also being conditioned by the, by the planets. So there are transits that are changing all the time. I've put out a free daily transit uh, report every single day based on at 6 o'clock in the morning in England. So um, if you want to know what the theme of the day is and what's going on, you can check it for yourself and you will see that it's true. We are patterns in a program, strange as that may seem. That's true. Test it. And the working with this knowledge is a process. It's a process. It's not like I'm going to become enlightened, that is my goal. No, it's about a process of waking up gradually, of knowing who you are and, 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 and letting, the, letting the conditioning drop away, letting the conditioning from childhood, letting the conditioning from all the things that have taken you away from yourself, it will drop away given time. You've got to give it time and you've got to keep watching. Well, you don't have to keep watching, you will watch because you know the truth. You might forget for a little while, but you keep coming back. You do your best. Here's an example of uh, <laughs> many different charts. There's nine different charts, just to give you an idea as much as we can of the different ways the chart can look and they can always look different. I say they're not the same. Okay, now we get to the four types. Okay, I wonder if I can do something with this. Okay, let's uh, let's start with the manifestors. How many manifestors in the house, please? Hands up high. Oh, excellent! Wow, really? Well, okay, okay, <coughs> okay. That's a good number of manifestors. Can we just see the the, the hands one more time? Excellent. Okay, this is going to be good. Excellent, really. Ricardo's a manifest. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, well, we should see. See, manifestors have a close and repelling aura. You know, they, they don't really want to stand together with other people. They don't care if they're manifestors or not. You know, they want to cut through life and just get on with it. The thing that manifestors hate above everything else is being controlled. They don't like it, do you, manifestors? No makes you really bloody angry you know don't you control me you know I I made a I made a mistake I was in uh, I was in uh, South Korea teaching and I wanted to show something about energy and my my translator the one that spoke the best English and she did spoke really good English I regarded her as the most correct manifesto I've ever seen and I said to her look I'm gonna do something I can't tell you what it is you know but I'm gonna do it in a minute is that okay I informed her and she said, okay, Richard. And I wanted to show a particular thing with energy, so I just pushed her. I didn't push her hard, but just pushed her. She was so angry with me. She was so angry with me. You know? I mean, fuming. The anger comes fast, doesn't it? You know, what you want on the other side of it is peace. So all manifestors need peace, want peace. Just leave me alone. Get, me, get out of my way so I can live my life. Don't interfere with me. And then manifestors go out there and they go into areas that no one else goes into. They open up new areas of, well, like Ra Ruhu, the founder of human design, was a manifestor. Need I say more? There are so many things that manifestors open up that only they can open up. They go ahead of us. For the rest of us, I'll only say this once, never, never chase a manifestor. Let them go, you know. They're on there, they'll start something and they're off starting off something else, you know? And the generators, those with the fixed sacral, they're the ones that come in and do all the work. They take, they, they learn, they, they get the benefit from what the manifestor has done. And hopefully the manifestors will too, but manifestors don't want to work. They just want to be free. The generators and the manifesting generators, there's a subgroup of generator called a manifesting generator. They have energy to the throat as well as having the sacral. They are the most powerful can be good, can be bad, in the sense like they can dig themselves a deeper hole or they can get a lot of work done. So manifesting generators have both anger or peace and they also have like all generators satisfaction or frustration. 
the world is mainly a full of frustrated people place where we get stuck where we're doing something that we don't really want to do we're just putting up with it until we can do what we really want to do now the whole point of this talk and the whole point of human design is to free the slaves the generators need to find work that works for them and you know you can that red square it has numbers on it you'll have certain numbers on it each one of those numbers means something if you have the ninth gate it's at the bottom on the right it means that you have the ability and the power to focus if you don't you don't you don't want to focus on the details if you do you do if you've got the fifth gate it's at the top of the red square on the left that means that you have to move in your own time you don't want anyone else to set your timing for you just will not put up with it you know even if you agree in the moment okay i'll see you at four you know you'll be ringing them up at two going you know i'm not going to see you at four i want to make it five and you you see i mean you know you just you know you recognize the truth in it because this is what you all do i know i've been doing this for 25 years without fail okay if you're if you're a projector if you're a projector you're one of about 22 percent of people and you're not here to work all the time either but you're here to guide you can see into others better than anyone else better than any other type so we need you because the generators can be busy fools and we can get lost you know we need the projectors to look in to see if we're using our energy correctly or not and we need to listen to them and they're walking around feeling bitter because no one listens to them if you've got projectors in your life pay attention and if you are a projector don't try to tell a man uh, uh, well any of us what to do while we're doing it because we're not going to listen but when we're not doing then we'll listen and then you can get through to us so it's all about timing if you're a projector choose the timing and then have we got any reflectors here they're one percent of the population oh one i see one hey yeah. Two, where's the other, where's another one? Okay, oh, of course, of course, of course. Okay, two reflectors. Do we have an advance on two? Oh, hands up if you're a reflector. I can only see two. Okay, well, there's usually, that's, that's, that's good, that's good. I know what's going on with what I'm doing if I look at a reflector because a reflector will let me know how I'm doing. They will reflect what's going on, you know. I've run experiments before, we might be able to do, we might be able to try something. And if I can have a reflector on either side of me, if we do try it, they will verify what's happening. I trust them. They have no fixed life force. They're not sun people like the rest of us. They're moon people. The moon and the stars. They're here for justice. And they're here to reflect back exactly what's happening. They can be very spooky. They can be very spooky. Because, you know, you're going to have things reflected back to you that you've forgotten. And suddenly it'll come up when you're in round of reflector. And they're not even trying to do anything. It just, it just does. They work on a different time too. Time, time for a reflector is like a day for us is a, is a month for them. It takes them a month to make a decision that's correct. They change through that month. It's an incredible thing being a reflector. Okay. All right, so quickly, manifestors, strategy. You need to inform before you act, and I know you don't want to. When you're old enough to open the door, you just open the door and go through, you know, and the parents come back and they go, where is, where is little Johnny? I don't know, he's gone. He's gone? Has someone taken him? Call the police, call the fire engine, you know, and Johnny's just walked through the door, gone through a hole in the fence, he's eating an apple in the neighbor's garden. So he gets punished. He was just doing what manifestors do. They have to inform. You see, once, once a manifestor informs, that's all they have to do. They don't have to explain. They just tell you what they're going to do. If you give them information that may 
Alter that, fine, but if not, get out of the way. If you're a generator, you're waiting to respond, you're waiting for that life force to come out of you, to tell you what is correct for you in any moment. If you're a manifesting generator, the same, but you don't usually wait, you're into doing something, you know? Manifesting generators get a lot done and they usually can, they can dig themselves a deeper hole or they can be very useful. They have both the frustration and the anger. Both those questions are, who am I? The manifester is who do I, how do I impact? It's an amazing thing for me to know that manifestors don't know how they impact other people and they bring such change with them. They've got to know, they've got to see the impact. It goes deep in us, I'm telling you, it does. The projector, you're waiting for an invitation, you're waiting for a door to open, you're waiting for someone to say, would you like to? And you can say, uh, no, actually, I don't. <laughs> Thank you, but no. Or you can say, oh, okay, yes, I will, as long as I don't have to do much. You know, so you're waiting for an invitation, you're waiting for an opening. And it can be the way someone looks at you, as well as a formal invocation. It doesn't have to be, you know, overcomplicated. People need to know you're a projector. You'll show them anyway. And the reflectors, yeah, well, you've got to wait for a full month, the full lunar cycle. You have to deal with the, the disappointment of, you know, people not being themselves. You're here to pick on what's unusual in people, what's different in people. You're here as our, as our Geiger counters, I guess. There to stand in front of something that's different and reflect it back. Who are they, is their question. Who are they? You take a reflector, you put them into one of the heaviest areas of Chicago, and they'll become the worst criminal you've ever known. You take them and you put them into some beautiful health spa, they'll be the most healthiest, brightest people you've ever seen. They will reflect whatever's around them. Okay. All right. There's something else. <laughs> uh, the life forces can come in four varieties. You can be a single definition where everything is joined up that makes you pretty independent most people are going to be split definition so you're trying to find something to bridge you you can be good at partnerships but basically you're kind of looking for someone to join you if you're a triple split if there are three sides to you well it's going to take you longer to know what's going on but when you do you can be better than anyone but give yourself time if you're a triple split it's quite a trip a triple split and if you're a quadruple split, are there any quadruple splits in the... Oh, wow! I've had none of those splits. How do you know you How do you know? Well, it's difficult. It's difficult because of the sun, but uh, I will be putting this film up and I will be putting in the slides to show you. So if you go to human.design or if you go to my YouTube channel, Richard Beaumont, um, this is probably, I'm probably going to put it up on next week on Thursday, about two in the afternoon. Um, and all the slides will be there. But there's only 0.56% uh, of people that are quadruples. I kind of have quadruples come to me because it's quite difficult at a psychological level to handle like four people in one body, because that's what it's like. It's a bit like that. And here's something interesting. We have a wheel in human design. It means that depending on the number, on the top of the black list of numbers, you're going to be in a wheel. So we're all in the wheel. We all get incarnated. We all come into the meat. Depending on which quarter you come into, it depends on what your purpose of life is. The first quarter, they're here to penetrate into what's going on through the mind. Things have got to be interesting. The second quarter, it's, it's from, it's the one from uh, gate 13 all the way through to 24. Um, the second one from 2 all the way to 33 is going to be civilization. If you're born on that, it's the, it's the, the, the underneath of the wheel. 
any any of those you're here for civilization you're here for the body you're here for the experience it's what you do with your body where you put your body where you move where you travel it's always going to be about form form some of you will create form with books some of it with some with dance some with the experience that you have with the medicine it's all about form if you're on from the third quarter from seven through to 44 you're here for relationship you're here for connections with the other you will have to have the other in your life one way or the other you know if you've got no one with you then you'll be going out to where there are people you'll be inviting gardeners around to help you with the garden that you'll be connecting you'll have to it's about relating and relationship and if you're on the final quarter where i come from if you're from cirrus then you're from first gate all the way through till the 19th gate you're here for transformation you're here for transformation you're here from the before and after you're here to see change you're here to be a transformative influence on people you know that time is running out death is coming it's about using the life very creative quarter as is civilization i mean they're all creative in one way or another but if you're from transformation you'll know what i mean again all these will be on the slides Ah, circuits. There are four sets of circuits. There are some people that are very tribal, yeah, and also down from the root. So any of those channels, it gives you a sense of your people. You know, you want to be with your people. You're very supportive in that. You're here to help support people, and you sometimes get pissed off when people don't support you. Well, not, any, not everyone's tribal. <laughs> it's just the way it is. The tribe will support you, but others may not. They might do it sometimes, but not all the time. And if you're a tribal person, you're going to like your tattoos, you're going to like your markings, you're going to like your colors, you're going to want to mark yourself out from different from the others. It's, you know, it's your people. You'll know who they are. You'll want to feed with them, you'll want to eat with them, you'll want to chat with them, you want to look after them. If you're collective, and if you're logical, it's going to be about the patterns, it's going to be about the preciseness, it's going to be about the mm, the reasons or the excuses. What are the patterns? What's the correct pattern? Very good people for analytics, very good people for systems, very good people for um, being able to get us onto the right track and bring understanding to us. If you're on the other collective, if you're on experiential, it's always going to be about the human way. It's going to be about, whoa, that sounds like an exciting thing. You know, that sounds really, uh, you know, something I haven't done before. You know, someone goes, well, I want to do it too. Okay, let's do it. Let's share and to have a new experience. So you have a new experience full of expectation. Well, it's going to probably lead in disappointment or crisis. Because after all, you've never done it before. Then you've got to get out of it and then you learn so there is this is this is what humans are for in a way you know we're here to we're here to measure things but we're also here to have human experiences and those of you with experiential uh, channels in you you know it's really about discovering through the experience growing in that expanding in that if you're individual and there's more individual chemistry than anything else in this Maya then well you know you're just weird really <laughs> i mean you're not really going to fit in you wouldn't be part of any club that would have you as a member you know that's like i say there's a lot of melancholy in individuals but there's also a lot of creativity i mentioned the acoustic side but you're also i mean you know i'm largely individual too so we are as we're strange that's all i can say and you've got to be able to embrace that strangeness and you've got to realize that you know you you you, you beat a different drum to everybody else um, okay and remember most of us are going to be mixtures of these different circuits but it's good to know what you are there's only 34 uh, channels okay it sounds complicated but it isn't well it is a bit but <laughs> Now what I wanted to really say to you today was about the difference between outer authority and inner authority. You know, who do you give authority to? Do you give authority to the government? Do you give authority to the bosses? Do you give authority to anyone else? You have your own inner authority. This is the way through. If you know what it is, if you 
obey your own inner, inner authority, then everything changes. Then you get free, and people have different inner authorities. Some of them are emotional, they need to take their time, they mustn't rush in. Even if they're feeling something they want to do right away, they've got to breathe, breathe, drink some water, move the diaphragm, take your time. If you're, uh, if you're sacral being, purely sacral, without the emotional center, then the response, as I've already mentioned, if you don't have that, you might be splenic. Splenes are funny things, you know? If you're a splenic person, it's about the sensations that run through the body, like the tingles in the temple, or the hackles at the back of the neck, or the shiver that runs through you, or the goosebumps along the arms. They'll tell you in the moment what you need to pay attention to. All right. Okay, time for an experiment. Um, I want you to get an experience of the emotional system. So, how many? So, all of those who are emotional, I want you to go on this side. All of those who are non-emotional, who don't have this emotional center. Okay, that's the one. I want you to go on this side. If you don't know, please empty here, full here. So, brown over here, white over there. If you don't know, please step out the way. We're gonna, I just want to, I want you to see what you probably won't believe until you do see it. Okay, so open solar plexus this side, fixed solar plexus this side. Well done, thank you, thank you. And, okay. If you're emotional, go on this side. And it would be a bit chaotic, but you know, we can handle it. We're all in the inner journey of people, okay? So. Okay. Oh, you're triple split. Okay, okay, we'll take your time. Okay, have we got a... So, can I see a clear divide? Can I see a clear divide? And uh, the, re the reflectors can sit in the middle if they want. Are you a reflector? Yeah. Okay, so we do have three reflectors. Okay, so spleen here, where are the, I need a clearer line. You've got to be 15 feet between emotionals and non-emotionals, yeah. Okay, non-emotionals over here, so, okay, and emotionals here, you're still too close. Okay, good, now you're getting there, definitely getting there. Okay, good, 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 hold on. So you just let the auras settle down a bit. Please try, please try to keep separate from them. If you don't know, okay, you see what happens. You see what happens with reflectors. <laughs> of course, they can be their reflectors. That's great. All right. So we just to let things settle down a bit. And what's happening with the emotionals is there's always something happening. There's always a there's always an energy that is running through them. And their feelings are always changing. You get five emotionals looking at a painting and they're all going to feel something different. <laughs> and the next day they're going to feel different again. But on this side, you can see it's beginning to, to show now. They don't have the emotional chemistry running through them. Okay, good, 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 good. This is the cool side. Okay. This is the side that is, you'll see, they're, they're, they're actually watching, they're, they're looking to see, but there's nothing, there isn't, they don't, they, they'll, you'll be conditioned to some degree with the emotionals, but it begins to wear off after a while. Over here, you can see there is going to be some, you know, some of you are happy, some of you are pissed off, some of you are, there's always something going on with you. Can you see it? Can you see the difference? Just, just do, it, do a quick scan, uh, Leander. So with the emotional energy, there is different ways it moves. Sometimes it's a we're gradually building up energy where you get more and more, well, excited or more and more pissed off. And then there are those, the energy that can be very quick. The emotional individual energy is melodramatic. I mean, it's, from, it's like the sky falls on your head sometimes. It's just like, whoa, you know? And, and then there's on the other ones who are the bush go, what's going on? It's an emergency. Yes, there is. The sky's falling on my head, you know? And then it goes, just as suddenly. And if it's abstract, it's a kind of a, it's, it's like a roller coaster wave, you know, where you're, you're heading for some, something. And you're on the road, you're on the journey. 
there is always a difference now I can see quite clearly uh, the difference you can see this side it's stiller can you see that you know there's going to be can you see it's beginning to we're beginning to settle down over here but there is no settling down over here there's always going to be something that they're feeling now if you don't believe me well let's try it like uh, one volunteer from the emotional side please all right well done yes stand up so just feel where you are now feel where you are now and now walk in walk into the uh, the non-emotional side and just feel what that's like <laughs> no go keep going right into the middle of them okay you're now the only emotional person <laughs> in a whole group of people that don't know how to feel they don't know what they feel so when emotional people say to someone who isn't emotional what do you feel they don't know they don't know the emotion the ones that are open emotion you don't know what you feel that's what you want to say don't you you know, tell me do you really love me what do you really feel uh what do i want you to say you know you can, we have to guess you know we might think but we don't know the emotionals always have something that's going on at an emotional level this is a you know it's it's how are you feeling okay if you move yeah but you have to move yeah. can you can you see can you yeah can you can you feel that it's it's stiller over there yeah so now go over to your own uh ones to see what that feels like is a dense there's a dense energy with the solar plex it's kind of a clinging energy it's a well it's a beautiful energy too it's an exciting energy but it's a it's a different power do you recognize that? It is more colorful in a way. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's always moving. All right, let's try something else. Now, we haven't done this for a very long time. We do have a chance. Okay, now, I don't want to cause too much chaos, but it would be interesting for all of us just to separate the four times, wouldn't it? Do you want to see what they look like? So everyone with a red sacral, that'll be the majority of you. I want you to come together where you're emotional or not, it doesn't matter. Everyone who's a generator or a manifesting generator, I want you to go... Okay, to Gloria, over there. No, it's the one above the bottom one. The one above the red one, it should be the red square. Here, this one. Okay. <coughs> Yes, all generators. Uh, Leander, if you can... Okay. All right, and everyone, everyone who's a projector, who, who are the projectors? I want the projectors over here. Uh, okay. All right, three projectors, that's okay. So have we got any manifestors? Manifestors, please. All the manifestors at the back in the wilds with Ricardo. Go to Ricardo over there. Wow. Okay. So projectors on this side, manifestors at the back, and reflectors. Okay. If you've got a red square, wow. Okay. Okay. Wow. Okay. So projectors and manifestors and reflectors you're now separated from the life force there isn't the sacral energy around you that you've been used to your whole life it's not there uh, the reflectors can go wherever they like the reflectors can wander the reflectors are going to pick up in fact the reflectors will help me um, will help sense what's going on they can do it better than I can actually so reflectors free to wander so this is, this is the powerful, it's the, the biggest group, but it's also the group that, that does most. Can you feel the life force there? Just can you see it? You know, this, this is life force. It will always be there. They need to use their energy in a good way, in a productive way. How many manifestors? Are you all manifestors up there? Really? Really? 
Well, that is, I guess I should have expected that at this gathering. Great, okay, okay, wow. Okay, got to finish. Five minutes, four, four minutes actually. Okay, four minutes, all right. And projectors, right. so these are the people that we need to g be guided by. They're the ones that you need to ask. They're the ones that can see closer into what's going on. Fantastic, thank you, thank you. Wow, look at all that, look at all that. So manifestors, can I ask you a question? What's it like to be with your own kind? Like you're only about 10% of the population. What's it feel like? You're all wild creatures. You're all completely uncontrollable, designed to be uncontrollable. Yeah? You know that. And the projectors watching, seeing. Okay, we could, with the projectors, I know I've only got about three minutes. However, I would like... I'm going to try this. All right. Manifestors, you can just watch. It's okay. Um, generators, I want you to face the projectors. Um, okay, projectors, close your eyes for a minute. Close all you close your eyes. So generators, the only people looking at you are going to be manifestors and myself. Okay, so this is what it's like to be looked at by another sacral being. You're familiar with it. Now projectors, open your eyes and look at the the generators. You're now being penetrated with the most penetrating, absorbing and focused energy generators. The projectors are looking straight at you. Can you feel that? Do you really feel seen? Because they can see you. They can see better than any other time. Great to see. All right. Well, unfortunately, I got it. So that was a lot of fun. Thank you so much for your participation. Um, thank you. Um, if you want to know more, my, my website is human.design. If you go to... Uh, on right now we've got Gloria and Leander who will be doing overviews so I'll just pass it on thank you thank you Richard that was amazing if anybody would like to you probably have to ring my readings are about three hours so deep we do them on zoom we're here just to look at the profile and just a few other things so we can